So here's a little bit about our guest today, Dr. Steven Sinatra. He is a board certified cardiologist and an assistant clinical professor of medicine at the University of Connecticut School of Medicine in Farmington, Connecticut. Certified as a bioenergetic psychotherapist and nutrition and anti-aging specialist, Dr. Sinatra integrates psychological, nutraceutical, and electroceutical therapies in the matrix of healing. He is a founder of heartmdinstitute.com and drsinatra.com, which are informational websites dedicated to promoting public awareness of integrative medicine, as well as vervana.com, which is his actual food site, which is very cool. Dr. Sinatra is a fellow of the American College of Cardiology and the American College of Nutrition. Dr. Sinatra's latest book, co-authored by Tammy Rosa, is Health Revelations from Heaven and Earth. So without further ado, here's our guest today, Dr. Steven Sinatra. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Lifestyle Locker Radio. We have a returning guest, the superstar, Dr. Steven Sinatra. So, Steve, welcome. I'm super excited to have you. Hey, Josh. It's great to be here again. Uh, you know what I mean? Exactly, right? <laughs> Well, we have a lot to talk about. You know, we, we had a great conversation the first time, but I think we're going to dive deep and we're going to hit some people's hearts. But we're also going to start to talk a little bit about pets and their nutrition because um, they're near and dear to our hearts. But let's let's talk about food because we're eating food, even if it's organic. And you talked to me something pre-show about props. You said Prop 6.5, is it? Right, yeah. Right, yeah. which we'll get into it. I'll let you get into it in a second. Um, but there's a lot of things that people don't know about quality and the vibrational energy of food, which I know you're, you're by far a huge expert in this field, um, being that you've been helping people for, for decades, right? Decades and decades. So um, give us a little bit of idea, you know, what, like, why would someone care about like, what, it, what their food vibrates like? Well, I, I'll tell you, you know, being a heart specialist for over four decades and being in this healing business, uh, I've learned by the hard way sometimes, by, by just convection. But basically, what I've learned over the last 40 plus years of being a doctor is that the vibratory state of your cells is the key to life. I mean, look at it this way, Josh. Even prehistoric man knew that all pulsation, pulsation, you know, that's what a heart depends on. If, if the heart doesn't pulsate, you're dead. Mm -hmm. and, and the heart was a center of life. So if we take the heart as a, as a pulsatory activity, cells pulsate as well. So getting our cells to vibrate, in other words, take in nutrients, push out waste products. If those cells vibrate better, we're healthier. And then if cells vibrate better, tissues vibrate better, organs vibrate better, the whole organism vibrates, so I've always believed that vibration is the key to life. Now, can certain vitamins and minerals enhance vibration? Absolutely. Can foods enhance vibration? Sure they can. Can toxins diminish vibration? Absolutely. And we talked about last, you know, the last conversation we had was grounding. One of the greatest aspects of putting your bare feet on the ground, this is almost two years ago we talked about this, mm -hmm. was that it enhances the vibratory nature of cells. In other words, you're absorbing electrons through your feet and when you're doing that, you're driving ATP or the energy of life in a preferential direction. So I've always believed that vibration is the absolute key of life, whether you're grounding, whether you're taking in food, whether you're praying or meditating, I mean, or doing Tai Chi, you know, uh, when, whenever you're working with vibration, you're healing. Yeah. So I can tell you, since our last conversation, I would say almost daily, I'm barefoot in my yard. Oh, that's great. That's oh, absolutely almost wonderful. Daily. Even in the winter, I'm the cold immersion guy too. So I'll walk in the snow and all that stuff barefoot, um, you know, for minutes. And, and where do you reside again? Sorry? Where, where is the state? Uh, New York. Oh, New York. Okay, great. Great. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, no, thank you for that. I've been doing that for <laughs> ever since that conversation. I thought it was good before, but you really – Hook, line, and sinker. I, I, why, why not do that daily? I'll tell you, Josh, I don't know if we did this last time, but can you see that? Leather shoes, yeah. Leather shoes. You got to walk on leather. I sleep grounded. You know, I mean, uh, I live in Florida for several months out of the year, and one of the reasons why I wanted to walk the beach every day. And be grounded. But, uh, I think grounded brings a lot to the table. We talked about that last time. But again, there's other ways that can enhance the vibration of our cells, position of grounded. So, 
it, it's almost like you know you can you can take energies within you know the ground energies and you can mm -hmm. take energies by eating as well. So healthy eating is a big aspect of uh, high vibration. Yeah. By the way, that's my next book. I mean, that'll be that's almost written now, and hopefully that'll be out in uh, twenty twenty. Oh, great. So let's get a little bit into vibration. Are there, are there certain frequencies? Are there certain um, things that people should be looking for in their foods? I mean, how do we, how do we know what's, what's, got, what's a high vibrational frequency food, which will bring our vibration, you said, up? And what's going to really diminish it? Like what things do we want to cut out of our... Well, the, the aspect of vibration, I mean, first I just want to get into it a little scientifically. I mean, MIT researchers studied the vibratory nature of cells and when they were looking at cells that were sick you know when malaria like organisms for example would penetrate a cell what they noticed was that the vibration of the cell would go down and um, what they reported on was that the atp adenosine triphosphate the energy of life you know in other words atp is what gives us our chi energy is it's what's it, you know i'm able to talk to you right now because our body is is making it yeah it's dealing with the primes per second you know and and I think I mentioned this last time, but even the German war criminals of World War II, they knew how to shut off the endogenous production of ATP by taking a cyanide tablet, you know? And that's why cyanide is so, um, it's so strong. It's so, I mean, it's an absolute killer because it knocks out what we call cellular respiration and it does it quickly. It does it within seconds, you know? So driving ATP in a preferential direction is the key to life. Now, um, how do you do that with let's say foods, you know, and, and, and basically if you can take in foods that aren't adulterated, that aren't, let's say sequestered with a lot of chemicals, conservatives or heavy metals. And, uh, you know, like California prop six, five is a, is a, is a nice, uh, standard to, to follow, particularly in vitamins and minerals. If you can take out the bad guys of let's say targeted nutritional supplements or, or foods, and if you eat more natural, more organic, uh, this will increase the vibration of the food. And whenever you, whenever you take a food in, that increases the vibration of the body. Now, let me say this. One of my biggest interests right now is these high vibrational waters. You've probably heard about them. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's waters that uh, will, in, will infuse energy. Uh, there's a deuterium depleted waters. There's, there's Dr. Paracone has a water, for example. There's different machines where they can uh, filter in oxygen through the water and the water gets more higher vibrational. And, you know, a lot of us drink water on a daily basis. Um, you know, I see this in young women all the time. They're drinking water, drinking water, drinking water. You know what's going on, Josh? A lot of the times the water doesn't get into the cell. In other words, huh. our cells are dehydrated, yet we're drinking water all the time. So the secret is, is actually getting inside the cell and getting inside the cell will increase the vibration of the cell. So it's not just about food, it's about drink as well. And that's why water, I think, is going to be the new, the, the new kid in the block coming forward where these high vibrational waters are going to bring a lot to the table as well. Really? Okay. Yeah, I've, I've tested, uh, what is it, hydrogen water, is it, I think? Oh, yeah. So pretty, pretty neat stuff. Pretty neat stuff. Yeah. Um, so, and I know with, you know, I, I'll say thank you to you again on the, uh, so everybody hears the, the products that you have yourself with Vervana is they're in, amazing. Oh, thanks so much. That's Unbelievable. Um, and I know was, we're going to talk about vibration and I know the quality of food, like when we put people, we need to eat, right? <laughs> That's human nature, right? We got to be, we got to stay alive here. So when it comes to quality of food and finding certain, you know, fats are, are very important in our diet, especially healthy fats. Um, what type, what, what makes, you know, the, the products that you actually have so powerful, you know, because we're talking about vibration, like what, what makes sure. them so powerful? Well, you know, I, I actually uh, talk about that in medical, uh, you know, lectures. I mean, um, first of all, if the product has any insecticide or pesticide in it, that will bring the vibration down. Uh, certainly if it has heavy metals, like lead and mercury are very pervasive. They're, they're in a lot of vitamins, they're in a lot of products, even mushroom products that have, you know, the different types of mushrooms are very, very healthy for you. But some mushroom products are cut with excessive qualities, quantities of lead. So ideally you want something that's an insecticide free, uh, pesticide free, lead free, um, 
you know, heavy metal free, certainly mercury. Mercury is a mitochondrial toxin. And, and that's why eating a lot of fish, for example, that have high quantities of mercury, you know, they get into the body. Aluminum is also a toxin. And um, I remember years ago, I was testing, you know, mercury levels in the hair analysis, aluminum levels, uh, even in, you can, you know, test them in the urine as well. And we have to be really privy that these heavy metals can accumulate in the body and they cause the vibration of cells to go down. And whenever a vibration of a cell goes down, well, illness sets in. And a classic example is cancer, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, even researchers have shown that where the vibration of the cells goes so goes way down that the cell gets, you know, taken over by um, uh, carcinogenesis. And that's, a, and that's a problem. So basically, the, the cleaner you eat, in other words, the more natural a substance, you know, without insecticide, pesticide, heavy metals, even BPA, bisphenol free, for example. I mean, you know, a lot of uh, jars and canned goods uh, have bisphenol A in there. So getting rid of bisphenol A is very, very important. Uh, you know, this, this is the lining of cans where they, where they, where they use this uh, type of material. And I have to tell you, it's causing havoc with reproduction. And, you know, and one of the things, you know, I go to conferences all the time and male infertility and female infertility is a major problem going on in the USA. And they just found out, for example, that bisphenol A, which is in the lining of so many foods that we eat, is a big source of infertility. So, I mean, the list goes on and on. And as consumers, what we need to do is we need to eat healthier, but we have to become productive without being self-destructive. In other words, we got to read labels. We got to, we really got to take responsibility for our health. We have to realize what foods contain a lot of, you know, GMOs or genetically modified, you know, organisms. I mean, the list goes on and on and the healthy consumer needs to be educated. And that's why I do these shows with you because you educate the consumers and, they, and once you empower the consumers to uh, eat healthier, then I believe as a physician, <laughs> that the, the index of illness and symptomology goes down. And whenever that goes down, we become healthier as an organism. And, and again, um, if people eat healthy and uh, practice good lifestyle habits, we talked about grounding briefly before, you know, uh, it, it fits my you know, six pillars of healing, which a healthy diet and certainly grounding is, is, uh, are, are part of those six pillars of healing. And I, and I preach about this all the time. Yeah, so it, it's interesting uh, with with the quality of the food, like how, how much it can decrease the, the health, you know, like your health so quickly, but it's also interesting. You mentioned, you know, educating people and teaching people to eat healthier, to make better choices when they're purchasing foods or products. I think people vote with their dollars, right? Correct. So, so if they're buying these healthy products and they're buying these things that are really great for their health and their family's health, I think, you know, that's the best way yourself and myself, we can get to the masses is because if they're voting with their dollars, I vote my dollars every day, right? We all do. You know, that means those companies that are providing garbage or poor quality to, to make a few extra dollars so they can cut costs or whatever it may be, why they're doing it. I don't know. Maybe they're just mentally sick. It drives me nuts that they, this stuff's legal. Um, we, we fight them back, you know, we, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I pre, I, I'm very grateful that, that, you know, you're a, a full blown warrior in this world. I mean, from educating, from creating, I arrows in my box, Doc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But you are, you're a full blown warrior in this, in this wellness mission, in this wellness world, because you're, you're, you're creating content which is educational to the world, right? Thank God to the right. internet, right? We're having this conversation through who knows what, right? Technology, it's really cool. Um, but you're able to get your message out. You're creating products that are safe for people to take, which have research behind it, which show that, that people can get healthy. And then we're gonna talk about pets in a minute, how you can, if you feed the pets good food <laughs> too, they will live longer too, you know? Yeah. We'll give them Cohen's on Q10. And uh, you know, I did that with my dogs uh, for years. Um, but, but I'll tell you, Josh, uh, eating healthy is really the key. And a lot of us really eat unhealthy. The other thing, too, is people don't know the synergism between nutrients. I mean, I've been involved with the vitamin and supplement industry for almost 40 years now. 
And uh, uh, one of the things about what we call phytonutrients that are found in foods, let me give you an example. Uh, lycopene, which is a carotenoid, is found in the red tomato. And uh, lycopene, when it's taken in the human body, it does remarkable things. It prevents the oxidation of LDL. I mean, I'm a heart specialist. And, yeah. Uh, you know, whenever you can prevent inflammation of blood vessels, I mean, you know, that's music to my ears, right? So um, I was attracted to lycopene uh, years ago, and, and, to, and that's one of the reasons why I got involved with pasta sauce. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm from an Italian-Irish background, and, but, but my Sicilian grandfather used to make his own sauce, and basically, as a seven-year-old, he indoctrinated me to the benefits of olive oil, even as a young child, and, and, and you know, marinara sauce, et cetera, et cetera. But where, where I'm going with this is that it's really crucial that, um, you know, we take in these ingredients that support health. Let me give you an example. I mean, I'm a male in my early 70s, for example, and prostate problems occur in males. Now, it used to be over the age of 50. Now, it's over the age of 40. I have a feeling it has a lot to do with the heavy metals and the plastics in the environment. But basically, one of the things that I came across in my readings is that um, if you take in lycopene, you know, from let's say crushed tomatoes or tomatoes or pasta sauce, this is very supportive for the prostate gland. Uh, now, if you take in, let's say, an organic broccoli that contains sulforaphane, you know, this is a, a bioflavonoid. Uh, lycopene is a carotenoid, so now you mix in flavonoids of, of broccoli uh, with the carotenoids of tomato. Now, when you take in this combination, you know, instead of getting two plus two equals four, this is what we call synergism in uh, nutritional healing, where now you're taking two substances, two nutrients, but instead of getting two plus two, getting four, you get like two plus two equals six, eight, 10, 12, 14. In other words, they're synergistic. The properties of sulforaphane, for example, in broccoli or indole-3-carbonyl, which is found in broccoli, and the uh, lycopene in tomato act synergistically. And what they do is remar they, they have remarkable uh, healing tendencies. For example, um, it's, <laughs> it's combative against women with breast cancer. In other words, a combination of sulforaphane and lycopene helps to prevent that, as well as prostate cancer in a male. So... This is how nutritional healing can be brought to the table. We can mix these ingredients together. So in short, and for our listeners, whenever I have marinara sauce, I always cook organic broccoli at the same time. Whenever one of my relatives comes over to the house, she's a survivor of breast cancer, she's in her early 50s. Whenever she comes to the house with the grandkids, I always cook you know, organic broccoli and feed her marinara sauce at the same time because I know this synergism as a nutritionist, uh, uh, this really works. And these foods can have a, can help your listeners so much. You know, it's almost like taking targeted nutritional supports. One of the things that people are worried about today is cognition, memory, brain health. If you take turmeric, for example, and you mix it with resveratrol, these are two nutrients. Again, you get a synergistic response that's healing for the brain. So there's so many ways we can, you know, use nutrition in a way of healing the body. And I just wanted to mention that because you can take vitamins and minerals. You can ground to get vitamin G. We talked about that where you're yeah, getting, of course. or you can eat healthy combinations of foods and rocket your nutrition to, you know, an incredible level. Yeah, so this is this is uh, really neat. So this is increasing your uh, that vibrational frequency that we're talking about by Correct. doing all of this and doing it in these combinations. So I know you mentioned two combinations. Are there? Are do you have? I mean, do you have a list or, or like of all of these things? Or is this, is this in this book that's coming out? All yeah, of these actually, yeah, the book that I'm, I'm writing right now, High Vibrational Living, uh, will have you know these combinations, these easy to do things. I mean. You know, another one is natural sunlight. I mean, people don't realize how healing natural sunlight is. You realize how many people go out in the sun and they're, and they're covering their body with sunblock? You know, first of all, these sunblocks contain, uh, I mean, a, a lot of them are carcinogenic. They, they actually yeah. can increase the, the incidence of skin cancer. And unless you've been taking, you know, uh, what the lifeguards used to wear in their noses. Remember years ago? Yeah, the colored zinc. You know, zinc, you know, uh, zinc oxide, for example. Yeah. 
uh, you know, it blocks the UV light, but you know, I guess women didn't want to look like a clown or they didn't want to put it on their kids, but that's the real deal. But, 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 but what's happening today, a lot of these topical solutions are micronized and they get absorbed into the bloodstream. And, uh, uh, th this is this is not good for the body, uh, you know. And so, so basically, what we need to do is we got to be privy to these aspects of healing. But if you go into that in the sun, fifteen to thirty minutes a day of, of natural sunlight, you're going to absorb a lot of vitamin D. And vitamin D is crucial; it's absolutely crucial for healing. And uh, you know, when I see these kids getting sprayed by sunblocks and all these things, I I, I just worry about it. Um, Look, shade is good. Hats are good. You know, umbrellas at the beach are good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you want to use the zinc oxides, I'm all in. But a lot of these uh, sunblocks, uh, you know, uh, can be injurious to the body as well. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm glad you brought this up. You know, I've been been running a lot. I've been outdoors quite a bit, like hours at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a I'm not a fan of sunblocks. Like I think they're the same. I agree with you 100. percent I think they're horrible for for the human and um, I don't get burnt, even though I'm in like blazing sun for for a long time. Um, people are like, how do you not get burned? I go, it's not that I just went from zero sun to two hours in the sun running. If I did that, I would look like a lobster and probably have you know right. layers of skin. But I've built up my ability to to work and be in the sun. Um, that my body, I don't get turn. You know, I don't turn like dark, 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 my body adapts. And it's really neat to, to have that over this year. I normally I would get, I'm not proud of it, but I would get burnt from time to time being in the sun, but not being a weekend warrior in the sun, like you said, being outside consistently yeah. is huge. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely huge. You can have a lot of healing in it. So it's good. You know, getting yeah. sunlight is very, very healing. Sunlight yeah. is very good. You know, again, that's going to be in high vibration to live. And I just bring it out. The, a lot of cures are so simple. Uh, you know, one of the books I was going to write was God's Simple Cures. Healthy water, healthy sunlight, healthy food, uh, you know, healthy ground, you know, vitamin G from the ground. There's so many things people can do to achieve optimum health. And it's not rocket science. It's so no. simple. I know. I, I think we, you know, I had a conversation with someone earlier today about, you know, the body really is it's such an amazing organism. It's not a machine. I hate when people use the word machine. Because it's got this intelligence that we can, if we're given the right things, we remove interferences to bad things. I mean, we could heal from, as far as I'm concerned, I think we could heal from anything. Oh, yeah. Right? Actually, uh, our mindset's very important. I mean, um, you're having a positive attitude, seeing your puppets as half full as opposed to half empty, uh, and thinking positive thoughts uh, and not dwelling on negative thoughts or or dread, or, or, or being a victim. I mean, these are such important aspects of healing. This is the emotional aspects, or the mind-body aspects of healing. And, uh, you know, it's important to you know, bring that into conversation as well. Yeah, I think that's so neat. Can you also, I want you to talk about, um, in nutrition-wise, because, you know, in some of the, the emails back and forth before the call, um, I want you to talk a little bit about, like, your olive oil, uh, the quality differences between, you know, people going to buy olive oil and their health. I mean, I've read quite a bit on olive oil at this point. I don't know what got into me, but it's, it's become much more and more interesting um, and, and for health reasons. So give us, give us some reasons why olive oil is an important part of a diet, but also like the differences. Like if I were to buy it at a grocery store just to find the cheapest one versus... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's well said, Josh. I, I'll tell you this. I mean, I think olive oil is one of the most healing uh, aspects you can put into your body. Um, and, the, and the literature and the research suggests it. First of all, let's look at the Mediterranean basin. I mean, the Mediterranean basin includes, you know, countries like Spain, Portugal is a little bit adjacent to it, uh, certainly France, the island of Crete. Uh, Italy, um, you know, and goes all around into Israel, into the, you know, the, the nations of Northern Africa. But in, in that Mediterranean basin, you find more hundred year old or centenarians in the entire world. And the Mediterranean basin has just passed in the, in the, in the recent analysis of longevity. The Okinawans, a typical Okinawan in Japan, lives about 70 years longer than a typical American. Now think about that. Average American is 79 and average Okinawan is 86. 
Now, Spain and Portugal have just surpassed that. And again, the more 100-year-old people live in the Mediterranean basin. I believe the common denominator is olive oil. Olive oil is the secret sauce of the Mediterranean <laughs> diet. I'll say that again. It's the secret sauce of the Mediterranean diet. There is no doubt about it. And um, uh, even a pre med study that was, uh, you know, done uh, by, you know, uh, Spanish investigators. Uh, and Dr. Gonzalez, I, had a, I invi- actually invited them to the American College of Nutrition Conference, and I spoke with him. But one of the things about the pre med study is that they took groups of people and they put them on the American Heart Association diet. They put one group on nuts because nuts have a lot of what we call monounsaturated fats. And certain nuts are very good for you. Mm-hmm. And there's no doubt about it. Uh, and they put another group on four tablespoons of olive oil a day. Think about that, Josh. That's a lot of olive oil. Mm-hmm. Four tablespoons mm-hmm. a day. So you would probably go through a small bottle uh, in about maybe about 10 days, 12 days. Uh, so by ingesting olive oil versus, you know, the monounsaturated fats and nuts versus a typical heart association diet, the olive oil group and the, per, and the people on nuts did far better in the American Heart Association diet in terms of cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, you name it. And basically when I saw this data and, and you know, there was over about a, almost a five-year period it was about 7,800 people. So the, 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 the number of the study participants was large. Um, that was a real head turner. And um, I was looking at olive oil as, as the secret sauce. And then around that time, when the, when, the, when the literature was coming out, there was a study done that showed that olive oil changed gene expression. And then out of the biogenome project that was discovered, the Nobel Prize was won in 1993 by these Nobel researchers, but we've, we've learned about the biogenome project in probably the last 20 years or so. What we've learned is that olive oil can take pro-inflammatory genes, which we all have, by the way, and turn them around to a non-inflammatory state. Think about that. We all have inflammation in the body, and inflammation is the root cause of illness, especially heart disease, my specialty. So if you can take our our pro-inflammatory genes and turn them around to a non-inflammatory state by drinking olive oil or using it in the diet, that's a no-brainer. And when I read that article, I I realized, I said, that's the reason why olive oil is the secret sauce of the Mediterranean diet. So... I started to develop my own olive oils, uh, and I started doing this several years ago. Now, I didn't want to go to Europe because, as you know, a lot of the European olive oils are covered with canola oil. I don't know if you know this or not. No, I didn't know that. um, Basically, uh, 60 Minutes did a show on this a few years ago, but uh, many of the European olive oils, uh, if they have 75% extra virgin olive oil on the label, they can have up to 25% of canola oil, which is a lot less expensive yeah. in the olive oil, and it can be declared, it can be declared, Josh, 100% extra virgin, despite the fact that it's only 75% extra virgin, okay? Wow. So this is, this is a disaster in my mind because, look, canola oil is good for machines. It's not good for humans. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pro-inflammatory oil. So the California Growers Council, you know, out in California, will certify your olive oil as 100% extra virgin. And that's why I had my, my olive oil over the last several years. I've been making olive oils for the last I don't know, maybe six, seven years. Uh, over the last several years, uh, my olive oils come from California. They're certified extra virgin. They're, they are organic. And basically, um, um, I just feel that the constituents of olive oil, now there's a lot of antioxidants in olive oil, is hydroxytolus, pyrosol, for example, example, oleopurin. And these antioxidants bring a lot to the table because they create the healing in the body where um, you prevent, you're preventing free radical oxidative stress. And, when, and you're also not only taking, let's say, small particle LDL, which is very, very injurious uh, you know, to the cardiovascular system. You're making it more fluffier. You're changing HDL. You're lowering blood pressure. You're actually changing the uh, dynamics of cholesterol and triglycerides in the body with olive oil. And that's why I think, as a heart specialist, 
This is why olive oil brings a lot to the table. It works on the biochemistry, but it also takes those pro-inflammatory genes and turns them around. So I am all in on olive oil when it comes to our health. Yeah, I think it's... it's Your it's, constituents and my patients uh, should be too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And it's a food, which is so cool. And, I, and I, that's something I didn't know is that, that pro and anti-inflammatory or pro and non-inflammatory uh, aspect of it. That's really, really powerful. So now I don't feel so bad after having a salad. And, and my wife looks at me like I have, you know, like six heads when I pick up the, 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 the bowl and drink the apple cider vinegar and the olive oil out of it. <laughs> oh, that's a good combination. Sure. That's a great combination. <laughs> So that's what I, I you know, have the vinegar as well. That's yeah. good. Um, so that's pretty neat. And I, and I hope the audience, um, make sure you, you definitely want to head over, um, and check out Ravana.com. You know, I'm going to put all details in, uh, and in the show notes for you, but the, his Dr. Sinatra's oils and marinara sauce are out of this world. You have to give them a shot at least once, which I don't think once is going to be enough, but you're going to have to give them a shot. Um, but also when you get into health and we mentioned earlier, you know, we'll talk about, you know, our four legged friends, our pets, oh, yeah, that's right? Right. Yeah. right. Um, I love to talk about, you know, you, you created a, you know, I'm sure you and your wife or you, or both of you probably, right. Created, you know, agelesspaws.com. I mean, you have yeah. such a passion for, for animals as well. Um, tell us a little bit about like why you created this uh, this company or this website and and what it stands for and what you do with it you know Josh, when i was a young boy uh, my mom and dad used to have pets and uh unfortunately i you know i dogs as well when i was a young teenager i grew up with you know cats and dogs so to speak on long island um then when i became a cardiologist um james lynch and i used to talk a lot uh, he was a phd from baltimore and uh, he wrote uh, the Broken Heart book. And I, was, I also went through a psychotherapy training program where I realized how emotions uh, and heart disease are connected. So Dr. Lynch and I used to have conversations. And um, he and I got, st we, he, he did some research and I stumbled upon other research showing that if you had a heart attack, you know, my specialty, and you came home to a loving pet, like a dog, uh, who loves you unconditionally, like your dog, for example, mm -hmm. will love you no matter whatever you do, especially if you give that love back. Well, if you come home from a heart attack to that loving dog, your incidence of sudden death or recurrent heart attack is 400% lower by coming home wow. to a loving pet. It's unbelievable because you're getting like a vibrational, unconditional love that is healing to the body. Now, if you come home to a judgmental spouse or if you come home to a <laughs> house, like, you know, a little loneliness, this triggers, you know, you know, more complications and earlier death rates. I mean, depression is a major significant risk factor for the heart. So if a four-legged friend keeps you less depressed and keeps you more involved, this is very, very important. So um, when I learned about this as a heart specialist, I surrounded myself with dogs again. I had two chows. Uh, I bought them as, as very young puppies, like six weeks old. Uh, I bought an elk hound at eight weeks old. And uh, I had three dogs, and I loved these dogs. And basically, uh, since I was, you know, a researcher on CoQ10, and I did research on CoQ10 and the animal model, uh, I started to give my dogs CoQ10 at a very early age. And uh, uh, they lived to like 15. I mean, Chow's lived to about 15. My elk hound was almost 16. So they lived a few years longer than their counterparts, and I have always attributed it to coenzyme Q10. So as a heart specialist, I realized how much pets bring to the table. So that's why I created Ageless Paws. Because Ageless Paws, you know, we all love our pets, you know, whether it's a horse, a dog, a cat, who cares? I mean, what, 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 I mean pets can bring so much to the table. So what I wanted to give back, uh, you know, to the pet industry is I wanted to develop targeted, not only supplements, we have like a, um, a liquid CoQ10 oil uh, uh, substance that we give you know, dogs and cats, but I wanted to get treats. So I found a, a, a sustaining you know, uh, facility that has these treats that, you know, without preservatives, without heavy metals, without you know, any garbage in there. Uh, and in these treats, I chose treats like 
like bison, for example. You know, American bison, you can't use hormones in them, so they're homo hormonal free. Uh, so I use bison uh, heart. I use uh, turkey heart. Turkey heart has one of the highest quantities of coenzyme Q10. Uh, so if you eat like turkey heart, that's very pure uh, in the treat and the dogs love them, now they're getting natural CoQ10 in the body. I use chicken and salmon. Salmon, uh, for example, not only has nitric oxide um, in its flesh, but it also has coenzyme Q10. So um, uh, these treats, whether it's salmon or bison or, or chicken, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, chicken livers, for example, are very high in CoQ10. So I developed these treats, you know, as well as, well as other, you know, varietals for pets because I want to give pets a lot back because pets gave me a lot in my life. And uh, as a heart healer, I realized that pets bring an enormous amount to the table, an enormous amount. So I'm all in on pets. <laughs> That's great. You know, I have as a question. Healing the human as a way of healing, you know, people as well. That's I mean, it's so neat and so great. So let me ask you this question. You know, mentioned like turkey liver, bison liver, or bison heart, excuse me, yeah. uh, chicken livers that are very high in CoQ10s. And uh, I've actually spoken to another cardiologist and he said one of the missing links in, in the human diet as we used to eat, you know, generations ago, like organ meat was a organ normal meat, thing, right. right? So would you rec like, would that be also something, I know that you know we want to give it to our pets, um, but would that also be something that would be great for, for humans? Well, you know, if humans wanted to eat human heart, I mean, that's probably be a tough thing to do, but humans can eat, you know, uh, organic calves liver, for example, which is loaded uh, in, in CoQ10. I mean, org organ meats have CoQ10. Remember, the highest quantities of CoQ10 is in heart. Hearts have the, ho the most mitochondria of any organ. The second largest organ that contains mitochondria is the kidney. And, and it's interesting, uh, you know, the kidney makes carnitine in our body. So, when we have people with renal insufficiency, uh, not only is the kidney being compromised in CoQ10, but also carnitine as well. So um, if people wanted to eat organ meats, it's okay with me. You know, I, I have no problem with it. Um, but remember, animal flesh contains the highest quantities of CoQ10. So if you ate like organic bison or organic, let's say, or free range uh, chicken or free range steak or lamb, that contains a lot of CoQ10. One thing about lamb, lamb is the highest source of carnitine in the body as well. So uh, I prefer, you know, well, lamb is usually organic or free range and uh, because, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're sacrificed at a young age. But basically, um, uh, lamb brings a lot of carnitine to the table. Certainly beef brings a lot of CoQ10. And um, this is why that, you know, my preferred way of eating is about 80% vegetarian and 20% animal. You know, I think people, if people eat steak every day or meat every day, I don't like that. I, I, I really don't because I, I feel that um, uh, the vegetarian kingdom brings more to the table, but pure vegetarians are lacking in CoQ10. I mean, I have to tell you, Josh, I mean, I saw, I, I, I have drawn, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of coenzyme Q10 levels in my patients and my patients with the lowest CoQ10 levels were vegetarians. Mm -hmm. And several of these patients had heart disease or cardiomyopathy. I remember two women, I'll never forget this. It, it, it was so frightening. They were both in their 50s. They both had breast cancer and they both had heart disease at the same time. And when I checked their CoQ10 levels, they were like neg negligible. It was unbelievable. And it's very rare that you see two life threatening, two life -threatening illnesses in the same patients. But I had you know, the pathology of, of heart disease and breast cancer. And they were both Asian women, by the way, which was kind of interesting because, again, they, they ate pure vegetarian and vegan at the same time. Huh, that's interesting. And you mentioned before, you mentioned uh, nitric oxide, I think, in like salmon. Right, yeah. Like, what, why, what's, what's the deal with nitric oxide? Why is it good? Like, as you mentioned, it, it's got to be good if it just came out of your mouth. So well, why is nitric <laughs> Well, you know... The Nobel Prize was one on it, and uh, you know you can take nitric oxide like like these beet supplements that you know one of my colleagues does uh, from Texas, and 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 they're good. But there's a lot of foods that contain nitric oxide, and certainly seafood 
the, the migratory salmon, for example, uh, is a source of nitric oxide and that coenzyme Q10 uh, the same way. Um, nitric oxide is found in the vegetable kingdom as well. Kale is a great source of nitric oxide, for example. So um, I feel if you eat um, uh, you know, a lot of vegetarian type foods and you combine it with nitric oxide supporting foods, you know, like migratory salmon, uh, certainly, uh, we can uh, shrimp is another uh, category that contains a little bit of nitric oxide, uh, and a lot of these, like salmon, shrimp, and lobster, they have this red color to them. Josh, you know, you've seen the like the the pink red color. Let's look, let's look at migratory salmon. The flesh is pink. You know, yeah. they contain a carotenoid called astaxanthin, and I got to tell you, Josh, I didn't know what astaxanthin was until about twelve years ago. I was uh, flown out to Japan to lecture on coenzyme Q10. Because the Japanese are very privy to coenzyme Q10. Um, they use it more than the Americans. And I flew out to Japan and I was lecturing at this conference. And there was a health show going on at the same time. And one of the booths, booth, you know, the, mm. the, the people that were there, they had this carotenoid from Hawaii and Japan called astaxanthin, A-S-T-A-X-A-N-T-H-I-N. And I said, what is that? And this is like 12 years ago. You know, like I said, I'm always learning, right? Yeah, of course. And I realized back at the conference, it was a very potent carotenoid that's like, you know, 50 times more powerful in vitamin E, 17 times more powerful in pycnogenol, 30 times more powerful in vitamin E. But wait a minute, why don't I know about this? You know, this is an unbelievable, you know, type of carotenoid that, um, you know, is very medicinal. So, um, you know, when I learned about that, um, you know, astaxanthin, you know, I, I ended up putting it in one of my supplements at Healthy Directions because I wanted to have astaxanthin mixed with seaweeds, for example, because seaweeds, I think, bring a lot to the table as well. So, um, you know, I made a supplement, you know, called Vitali C, because one thing astaxanthin does, and by the way, since my visit to Japan 12 years ago, um, I, I did a computer research, you know, study on astaxanthin. Josh, there's 1,400 articles out in the medical literature. I mean, this is like huge, you know, and like, so... If people can get it in lobster, crab, and shrimp, you know, this, this red carotenoid, it's, you know, it's really good. Or you can take it as a supplement. And, and that's why I just feel uh, astaxanthin um, is one supplement that if I was stranded on a desert island, I wouldn't mind a few cases of astaxanthin like coenzyme Q10 being washed ashore. I mean, I, I really think that nutrient brings a lot to the table. And the literature supports not only eye health, but brain health, heart health. And for your women listeners, Astaxanthin is fantastic, you know, for the skin, as is coenzyme Q10. So for healthy aging, I really like the combination of astaxanthin and coenzyme Q10 together. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I, it's, it, this is the first time I'm hearing that. That I don't want to try saying it right now, but uh, ast astaxanthin. Astaxanthin, you got it. There we go. You got there it. Go. Um, so that's pretty neat. So we have your. What's like? What's the next chapter in life? I mean, you're helping people. And you're constantly learning, like you said. You're helping pets. What's next? What's next? Well, you know, pets, horses, people, um, the equine, I mean, the canine, uh, cats. Um, I think what's next is uh, the spiritual connection. Um, yeah. One of the things that um, I learned at a very young age, not at a young, maybe in my mid or late 40s, I realized that people get sick um, if they get out of touch, you know, with their physical, emotional, and spiritual energies. Uh, and the reason why I bring spirit to the table uh, is because, you know, when I met Tommy Rosa, did I talk about Tommy Rosa on my last show with you? I don't think so. Oh, it's, oh, it's amazing. But about seven years ago, uh, I was on a TV show and uh, Tommy contacted me. He was a plumber from New York City, Josh, and um, he was run over by a car, uh, and he went to heaven and back. Uh, he had a life after death experience, and uh, I go to the life after death conferences. I've been going to this conference in Montreal for the last ten years, where you know all the researchers from the country, Ray Moody, uh, you know all all these people from all over the world, they uh, talk about the you know the near death experience, and. Uh, um, 
Tommy's near-death experience had a profound impact on me because uh, he went to heaven and back and uh, saw what he's, you know, he's, he's told us what he saw in heaven and, and stuff like that. And it was a big impact on me. So um, I think the combination of spiritual energy. Now, a lot of people aren't ready for spiritual energy. It takes a while to, to really redirect our physical and emotional energies. But once you can get your physical and emotional energies in sync, and if you're open to the spiritual aspects of life, once you allow that energy into the body, now you have the trinity of spiritual, emotional, and physical. And once you have that blended into the body, I think that's when the real healing takes, pl takes place. I mean, I got to tell you, I have met people who were off their spiritual track. And <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but a lot, these people developed an illness in their life, whether it was heart disease or cancer. And I asked some of these people who are very, very enlightened and intelligent. I said, well, why do you think you got heart disease at this time in your life? Or why do you think you got cancer? And some of my patients, and by the way, Josh, you know, being a, a patient versus a doctor, Patients can be great messengers for the doctor. They can offer a lot of material to a doctor where a doctor can take that material on and help heal other people. So even though we're doctors, we're learning all the time. Uh, yeah. And some of my patients gave me these great insights. And they would say to me, I think I developed cancer or heart disease so I would develop my spiritual self. You know? and, and you know, when you hear this over and over again and you see these patients heal themselves, and then when Tommy Roser and I wrote the book, Health Revelations from Heaven, um, I, I just feel blessed as a, a practitioner, as a doctor, that uh, I believe that uh, I have come into the full circle of now developing not only the physical and the emotional energies, but developing that spiritual insight. Uh, and I think that this is the, the holy trinity of healing the human body. So That's for any of the listeners, yeah. I want to bring spirit into their life prayer, meditation, you know, whatever it is, you know, belief in God, uh, uh, belief in Jesus Christ, whatever your listeners want to do, I, I just feel that uh, uh, this is very, very healing and, and can help uh, prevent uh, lower energy, <laughs> yeah. lower vibration, and, and basically uh, prevent illness as well. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I get to speak to, you know, as a podcaster, I get to speak to lots of people and what I find very interesting, just being, you know, what, we, what you were just saying, is that I find that a lot of the people that I get to have conversations with have had some pretty crazy tragedies in their life, health-wise, yeah. physical-wise, emotionally. Um, and when it, when it becomes so severe that they're forced to make some kind of change, mental, physical, spiritual, something, that's when a lot of growth happens it's like tragedy to triumph it's really it's really interesting and i know you're saying that with your patients but i see that with people that or hear that from people that i get to interview i just got the angelic kill on that you know what that is yeah okay gosh the angels are rooting for us and, and and you said it in other words when people have these horrific situations happen in their life the angels want us to get back into the spiritual domain and they're rooting for us and they're, and they, and they're trying to help heal us. But when people have these maladies in their life or these tragic events, the way you, and you said it so eloquently, um, I got the angelic chill, meaning I had this little chill in my body where the angels were telling me what Josh was just talking about is the truth. So if you ever develop a little chill as you're talking, it's almost like your spiritual messages around you. Remember, you know, our energy field goes out several feet, you know, but there's a, an ethereal field out there that's quite large. And uh, uh, I believe that the spiritual domains are talking to us all the time. Yeah. You know? yeah. Sometimes we get it as an insight. Sometimes a person will feel a little flicker before their nose. Sometimes, you know, you'll get it in a dream, you know, uh, where, you know, the angelic realm is talking to us. I mean, I got to tell you, as a physician, oh, I'm going to chill again. As a physician, um, I, I really believe in the spiritual realm because uh, it's just, without it, 
uh, you know, uh, life is um, just too shallow and, and, and very predictable in a way. Uh, once you bring the spiritual realm in, all things change. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's come full circle. So, I mean, we started off talking about vibration and, and energy, that even down to like the atomic, at least at cellular level, but even down to that atomic level. So life is motion. Um, and the better energy that we have in all of these different areas, from we said the food we're eating, to the movement, to being in nature, to uh, being around our, when I say pets could be nature. I mean, right, we're, we're around, nature. right? We're around like you're getting that unconditional love, getting sun. Um, to the spiritual side, I mean, all of these things are designed or by design, if you will, right, are there to help lift our elevation. And I think it's our own, our own doing that us as a society, as I mean, the U.S. alone, I mean, we, we, we make some choices based off of fear, based off of unfortunately paying attention to very, very brilliant marketing minds to eat poorly to neglect our lives, to spend, you know, hours and hours a day on social media instead of being with the people we love and care about. So, I, th I mean, your message is big. This is not like something that little that we're talking about. Well, I, I feel humble I could say that. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's true. I mean, one of the things that the heart specialist, um, I've dealt with many life after death experiences, and uh, Tommy Roses was the most profound. But, um, you know, You've heard about the tunnel of light. Have anybody ever this mentioned yeah, that? I may have heard it, of course, I think. But I mean, if you really look at that, what the tunnel of light is, you know, when a person, see, we're in a third dimension on earth, so to speak. But when you go to heaven, you have to go to a higher dimension. In order to get to that higher dimension, a lot of these people go through a tunnel where it's actually a tunnel of light. And it's actually that higher vibration, because we're talking about vibration is really the key to, yeah. you know, optimum health, but it's also the key to spiritual enlightenment as well. Because when you, when you go through that tunnel, you are going to a higher vibration. You have to go through the tunnel to get to the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth vibration of the heavenly realm. And, and that's, you know, that's the mystery. But again, all these life after death experiences, and I'll tell you that conference I go to in Canada, in, in uh, Montreal every August, it's, it's really unbelievable i mean i have to tell you i mean some of the things i've heard there are like at first you think that it's crazy but then after you're there and after you hear it again over and over again over periods of years you, you assimilate it into the body and you absolutely believe you absolutely believe what's going on and and you know josh people like their belief is what they can see feel and touch there's a lot out there that we can't see feel and touch that we have to use our intuitive and our spiritual minds and in, in our belief systems. And I, and I think it's all good. I think it's all good. Yeah. I mean, we can, I, and I love that conversation because if you just look, if we just look at the human body, right? If a dead human body and a live human body, all the parts are still there. Right. Exactly. The are still there. There's that life. There's that spark. There's something that keeps us, I, we're having this conversation, right? I, you know, right. So there's something that's amazing about the human body. Whatever anybody wants to call it doesn't make a difference to me. I think that you're recognizing that there's something bigger you know, than you is, right. is powerful. Is powerful. And that, that, that same energy that goes through the body, that, that spark is, will allow for you – know, the diminishing of the spark will allow for sickness, disease, death, all of this, these layers of bad to happen but they also can have layers of good on the other side. So, exactly. Right. So it's pretty neat. I'm glad we, you know, kind of went off the side here a little bit, because I think this is important to realize that, you know, you can be a cardiologist, a chiropractor, a podcaster, and you can have real conversations and understand that there's something bigger, but we, while we're here now, there are a lot of good things that need to be done to help society, but also we have, you know, we have so much that this world has to, to use to help increase our vibration naturally um, in a great way. You know, it's, it's good to build relationships this way. It's good for your health. So. Well said. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about is once we increase our vibration in our body, just like those MIT researchers showed, once the vibration of cells go up, we can keep disease out of our presence. Yeah. And, and again, that vibration is a, Spiritual, emotional, slash mental, physical. 
bring that vibration together. We all have optimal health. Awesome. Awesome. So Steve, this has been, a, this is a really cool conversation. I'm, I'm really, uh, really oh, glad we got to good. have this really glad, you know, I'm glad we got to connect again. Um, I think, I think you're, uh, it's a blessing to have you around because you, you bring a lot to the table. Um, you have, you know, decades of, of knowledge and, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful that I get to pick your mind and have these conversations and share you with our audience and, you know, the world. Um, because I just found out recently that we're, we're downloaded in 57 countries. Oh, so, nice. Nice. So it's really cool that you get, you know, I get to help bring you more places, right? They tr planetary travel at this point. Um, hey, if you can heal a few people in the world, that's what it's all about. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, the best places for people to find you, right? I have Irvana.com, agelesspause.com, where else? Oh, drsinatra.com. Drsinatra.com. Yeah, that's my vitamin and mineral company that I help you direct it. But Nirvana and Ageless Pause are, are also, and oh, and heartmdinstitute.com. That's sort of a non-commercial website. A, a ton of information on there, Josh. I should have mentioned it before. Heartmdinstitute.com is pages and pages of, of information. Great. Because I, I want to make sure that people can find you. Um, you do have a gift. I'm going to share that in the in the in the show notes and the comments below. Um, but I believe you are giving a little bit of a coupon for uh, for people for Vervana for your first time. We're getting a 15. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. People have did that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the code is Hant15. So my last name Hant, and then the number 15 will give you that um, that as well. And you also uh, can also get a, a sample from Ageless Pause. So I want to thank you so much for that. That's uh, grateful for that. I know my wife will be uh, increasing your stock <laughs> with ageless I'm, pause. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. And remember, the posture is high protein. You don't get an insulin. In other words, you, you don't get a, a, a really incredible insulin response to do what you get with semolina pasta. High protein pasta is like eating a small steak or a large hamburger. You know? Exactly. We That's love it. Stuff. So um, I appreciate you. And, All right, um, Josh. Stephen, Dr. Sinatra, thank you so much. All right. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Hey, I want to thank you so much for listening to Dr. Sinatra on this episode of Lifestyle Locker Radio. Holy cow, what a cool dude. From vibrational energy to healing to health to food, holy cow, to love, right? All of this cool stuff. What a brilliant human being. This guy's had generations of life behind him and learning and I don't think he's going to stop anytime soon. So we're glad to have him as part of our family as well here at Lifestyle Locker Radio. If you want some details and discounts, right, you can head over to vervana.com and put in the code HANT, H-A-N-D-T, 15 to get 15% off your order at vervana.com. I can tell you the food is pretty amazing. I actually, love, actually, I love the olive oil. I have tons of it. Um, there's that, and you know, all these other details, connections, and links will be in the show notes from this YouTube channel, this social media, and everything else. Also, you can connect with us. We'd love that as well. If you haven't yet left a five-star review on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it. Dr. Sinatra would appreciate it too, because it helps get his message out there as well. So have a great day, evening, or night from wherever and whenever you're listening to this. Bye-bye.